It's time to create contracts and we'll connect it to our EPGs. Contracts are policies. This is where we filter application traffic like an ACL. This is where we also enable SLAs, QoS, or service chaining. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the Cloud Data Center. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in cloud and data center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. All right, so let's create a contract. So. Um, again, I can uh, create a contract using the left pane, right click, and then create a contract, or I can click this icon, create a contract. It doesn't matter. So I'm going to uh, create a new contract and I'm going to name this web contract, okay? Because we want to send traffic from the client to the web server. And uh, the subject, I'm going to add a subject and uh, under this contract subject, this is where we will also add the filter. So I will name the subject as web subject or subj, and then I will add the filter. The filter, there are already pre predefined filters here, are ICMP, um, default, etc. but we need to create a new filter. And I will name this web filter and I will add entries. Now this entries, this is also considered rules. So if you're going to compare this to ACL, it is comparable to ACE or the access list entries or the ACL rules. I will add ICMP, okay? So this will be our first rule, ICMP and uh, I will select ether type IP and protocol ICMP. Now I will add the TCP port 80 later, the web ports. Uh, this is for testing purposes only. Okay. So we need to test first and uh, if it goes well, we will add, uh, or we're going to permit TCP port 80. All right. Now let's go back to VMware. Okay. And uh, I will. I will uh, access this VMs via console. Okay, so this is the client and let me access also the web there, okay? Now the client, let's move it here. I will send control out delete then and I will I will enter the password, all right? And then I will access the command prompt. There you go. Now, let's just verify their IP addresses. So this is 172.27.33.13. And obviously it should not be able to ping .11. .11 is by the way, the web server. Okay, so this is the web server. 172.27.33, uh, the third octet is our pod number, and this is the host IP.11. So there sh they should not be able to ping. Uh, why? Because they are in two different EPGs. So if we go back to our application profile, let's verify. So this is the client, okay? This is the client, and this is the web server, two different EPGs. Although they are in the same subnet, they should not be able to communicate to each other. Again, two EPGs requires what? Of course, it requires policy. It requires a contract so that the host from one EPG can communicate to the host to another EPG. And this is what we're going to do. Okay, I, I will create a contract by dragging again and dropping this contract icon. Now I need to move this contract near to the destination EPG, which is the web server or the web EPG. And then there's an arrow here. The arrow should be pointed to the source, 
which is client. Remember, the traffic should be from the client to the web server. Okay. Now, the reason why I did that, because this will automatically configure the consumer EPG is the client. And the provider EPG is the web EPG. Okay. We can do it again manually, but this is the easier way. Now, under the contract information, we can create a new contract, but why would we do this if we have already an existing contract? And this, this is what we did in the past few minutes. Uh, we created a web contract, and all we need to do is select that web contract, click OK. Okay. And then I'm going to click Submit. There. Now, um, let's see if we can ping the destination which is 172.27.33.11. And uh, we are still unable to ping it. And why is that? Okay, and this is layer two. Um, there's no need, at least at this point, there's no need to add default gateway in our bridge domain. Okay, and uh, are we expecting this to work? Well, not really. The reason why is if we're enabling um, layer two network intra EPG. Okay. We should use the traditional way of Mac learning. Okay. And that is true. Our flooding. So what we need to do is we need to go to bridge domain and then, all right, bridge domain 33 or BD 33. And then we need to enable our flooding because by default, this is not enabled. Okay. As you can see, it is not checked. Now, before we click our flooding, let's still verify it's not reachable, right? And from the web server, if I ping 172.27.33, ah, let's ping ourselves first. All right, if I ping ourselves, this is okay. But if I ping .13, which is the Windows client, it is not reachable. All right, so it's still not reachable. Okay, we verified it multiple times. Now, the next thing I will do is just click Submit to enable our flooding. Okay, Submit Changes. And let's verify. Now, it is reachable. Now, from the client PC, as you can see, it can now reach the web server, okay, with an IP address of 172.27.33.11. Next is we're going to verify if we can access this IP address via the web browser. And take note, because this destination is a web server, that is why we need to verify it through web server. And this is the IP address, right? 172.27.33.11. Huh. It's not reachable. See that? Just to verify, this is the same IP, right? 172.27.33.11. Okay, it's failing. It's failing through web browser, but we can ping the same IP address from CLI. The reason why it's failing via web browser is because if we check our contract, let's go back to our application profile topology. If we check the contract and I can actually hover my mouse, see that I can hover my mouse from the application topology, or excuse me, application profile topology page. Okay. Uh, it tells us that this web contract has only one entry in the web filter and that entry is ICMP. So we are only permitting ICMP. That's the reason why uh, the ping is successful, but not the web traffic. Now, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to um, edit the web filter. And uh, as you can see, you cannot edit from here. So this is the web contract, what we created, and this is the subject. And now you cannot edit from here. So you can add a new filter, but you cannot edit an existing filter. To edit an existing filter, you need to go to here, filters. And this is the filter that we need to edit. We need to add a new entry. I'm going to click the plus sign and I will add web. 
and then under ether type i will select ip under icmp i will select tcp now from the source port range it says unspecified this means uh any okay if you're if you want to compare this terminology to, to access list it's like any the default now what i would do is to specify port 80 okay from n2 meaning this is this is a specific port 80 uh rule okay and this is to the destination port i'm gonna click update okay and uh, if i go back to our application profile topology page if i hover my mouse to our web contract as you can see there is now a new entry it says web okay destination http now let's go back to our client okay and uh, we can still ping the destination, right? Now let's test if we can now access the web server by hitting refresh button. And there you go. As you can see, we are now seeing the web page, Farfly Education Test Web Application. And here is the IP address of our web server, 172.27.33.11. And that's how easy it is to create unused contracts. Very easy, right? We also able to test that our two hosts can communicate to each other. The client able to send HTTP requests with response from the web server.